who won, I already know. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Well, I'm doing a lot of my shopping in the buildings today on Sunday. Usually you would think you'd shop the outdoor dealers, especially the ones in the far fields who only come once a year. But I had a bunch of people indoors say they had good shows, but their neighbors were complaining that they didn't. And that means there's going to be some bargains indoors. There are no YouTubers shopping this morning at all. I think everybody got through the show and went on to antique malls today. So I am solo. And in a way, that's good because I know they've already been through the ephemera because they love this dealer. But it means that I can go through and see what they left. We all look for different things. Isn't that cute? Playmates of Peter Pan. Very sweet graphic. And I have a shepherdess in the family, so perhaps she'll like it if it doesn't sell. But I have a feeling it will sell. I have sold a lot of Bambi stuff this weekend. And Thumper and Flower and Thumper's girlfriend. This is a re-release poster from 1978, as you see there in the corner. That's your code. He's got a really, really fun selection of pop culture stuff. Movie press books, movie posters, old Viewmaster reels, Planet of the Apes, color forms. Wow. Yes, color forms where you would melt things in the oven. My mom did not think that was an appropriate toy for us. James Bond's Aston Martin and an electric drawing set. People keep saying, what from the 80s is coming back? Well, anything related to Beetlejuice would be a good guess. And anything that looks like the style of Memphis furniture that the people who bought their house after they die in the movie and they come back to haunt, any of that kind of furniture, absolutely very hot right now. This dealer has so many great sand pails, including the ones with the pumps. You rarely see these. And when you do, they're often broken and not in working order. So this is really an unusual thing. A lot of these were done in the 50s. That one's 110 with the pump because that's unusual. But sand pails in general are pretty collectible. And not just in Florida, although I sell them well there. That one's 78. This sifter is cute. I think this is Ohio art. You can see how the graphics change. Yes, there's the Ohio art label. They did Etch-A-Sketch and stuff, but before that, they did a lot of what everyone else did in terms of tin toys. This one with the Western is 55. That's in really good condition. Condition matters because kids played with these a lot. Fun collection, though. Here's three more. These are going to be older, probably 1940s or 50s. That one's 158. Some of these are pretty hard to find. Oh, the pig has uh, got something going on there. I think he's popped a button. 195, that's very cute. And then this one, Happy Frog, Teddy Bear, and Myrtle Turtle. He's also got some really good Hopalong Cassidy stuff. The Nightlight is a very hard piece to find. And the Target Practice is really cool, and it's in good condition. You know, a lot of these were mashed and mangled. So he's also got the Saddle which was done as a canasta tray. So we'll take a look at that. So see, Hopalong transcended because obviously kids were not playing canasta, but adults were. This is something called Tippet, which looks like a fun game where you roll the dice and then you are able to tip and flip and you make combinations and add them up. And I guess it was a math game but it's another one by wolverine we see a lot of tin toys by them in the 1930s 40s and 50s and this is interesting who won i already know the braves back in a less politically correct time they were world champs so he's wearing a crown on his head along with his feather here is kind of the ultimate sam toy this one is by the Chain Company, J. Chain and Company. This one even has its box still. 
It was played with some, but it's in amazingly good shape. This is from the 1930s, the sand chute. You fill up the little cart, and then the weight of the sand makes the cart roll down, and you dump the sand out on the bottom. You still have the ones you had when you were a kid? Yeah, our neighbor was a Tupperware dealer. Oh, cool. And she, we, our house is loaded with Tupperware, and I had all the kids' sets, and my mom still has them. Oh, that's great, because the yeah. kids' sets, I mean, as you see here, I guess this is $95. I, they're, they're the hot thing. There were three or four, I believe. Um, a one. And Different colors. One. Yeah, there was one that had um, like a luncheon set, had the little, uh -huh. little square plates. Yeah. Yeah, so it was really cool that I had those. And my mom made us keep everything in pristine condition. I'm, I'm glad she did because we still have everything. So. It's so cool that you yeah. still have your stuff. This is really neat, too. I really like Red that with the green. original, yes, to have the pantry and the whole thing. Yeah. And that's that's really hard to find altogether. Two ninety five is really not an unfair price for what oh, it is. Yeah. Imagine that, that yeah. how many are going to be out there like that. Yeah, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, that's neat. So have you found stuff that uh, you can sell? A little bit. A little bit. kind of selfish and shopping for myself. Oh, good. Well, you know, that's a great thing. It's, a, it's an antique show, and we're all yeah. collectors. That's how we got started in this, right? Well, these are a little crusty and need some cleaning, but a whole set of six together is what's special about these. We're seeing these that were taken out of cafes years ago, surfacing out of barns and things like that. Now they're asking 250 for the set of six. To me in this unrestored condition, especially needing chroming, that's a little high, but I do like the bases on them and the fact that there's a set is definitely helpful. We've got a furniture restoration advertisement with some nicely refinished furniture to show you what they do. And also this really cool Buckeye Incubator, it's only $125. That's actually pretty cheap. I've seen these sell for more than double that. They were made to incubate chickens, of course, but a lot of them were put up as tables at a later date, and that's how you usually see them presented now. Cherry and Tiger Maple Leaf Table, that's $325, and the Cherry Table next to it, $185. So the prices are pretty good considering they're doing this restoration. I wish they had a glass restorer here. I could certainly use one right now. This guy has real advertising and I love showing the real stuff because we're seeing more and more fakes moving in because it's hard to get the real stuff, but he's got it and he's got really wonderful pieces. The condition is mostly good. Now the Dr. Pepper is a little worn, but you don't see their signs like the Coke ones. This one is 685 because it is a very hard piece to find. But he's got really neat stuff. The old gas and oil in particular is doing well, especially pre-war brands that aren't around anymore. Stanicola Polarine, the standard motor oil of Pennsylvania. That hasn't been around for a while. And then this one, Solite Gasoline, very 1930s. 2600 on that. He also has a bunch of these license plate toppers that are really fun. People would put these on their cars, especially in the 50s. 40s and 50s to advertise various things, or in this case, during the Second World War for patriotic purposes. They did make them into the 1960s. There's one from the Seaside Aquarium in Oregon. We used to have an antique mall in Seaside. There's still one there that's good, from what I understand. Look at this neat old memory jug with all the marbles in it. Isn't that cool? Marbles with little hinges and little buttons. People would just take some old jar and cover it with some sort of a composite and then stud it with all of their favorite keepsakes. And these things are worth a good bit of money now. This one's priced at 185 That's a fairly typical price. You can see from the clay marble at the top and the other thing is made that this probably was done in the 1930s at the latest. I wanted to highlight this piece too. My friend Susan has this. This is Austin Products, which did a lot of chalkware statuary in the mid to probably late 20th century. This one is 1996. The designer is Alexander Daniel, as you see on her tag. She did a little bit of research on this. And there is both your Austin products mark and his artist signature. These modernist pieces by Austin are starting to sell for pretty good money, and that is why, oops, the uh, picture did a little flip there, but it sounds like it didn't break. Anyhow, the Austin products like this, this one's priced at 150 A lot of these larger deco revival style 
sculptures by them are selling in those price ranges now, especially the artist signed. Well, the YouTubers did leave some stuff for me. I'm finding some cool things at decent prices, and it's fun that I ran into somebody again. So I know some of them are filtering in here now. I'm going to have to go open my booth soon. All right, so let's look at our haul from our rather brief but very fun shopping excursion this morning. I was really pleased to see that in spite of all of the YouTubers and all the viewers and all these collectors and the thousands and thousands of people who came this weekend, there was still stuff to buy that was really cool and well-priced for what it was. So let's take a look. This piece here is Majolica. This piece has a mark that was done from 18th to about 1899 Clifton decor. This would have been out of England. English Majolica often has a very strong pattern on a very basic field. So you see the pattern. They like to do a lot of flowers and leaves and berries. And it's decorated front and back, of course. This was only $20. And the fellow knew what it was, but he said, well, I don't have a customer from Majolica. And I said, well, I do. So he was happy to let me have it, and I'll send it along to my customers. The salt and pepper shakers, they're all cute. They're all cork stoppers. I try to mostly only buy the cork stopper ones because they're older, 50s and 60s, Japanese. The cute little dog with the newspapers. This old salt and peppy, which was a classic from the 30s, actually. These very cute tubby little towel here. And these ones with the swami, I thought were all really neat. They were $2 a set. This is on Sunday after everyone's been here. So yes, you can find things on the last day of an antique show, especially a big one. This purse, I paid 20. It's too old leather. It's really well made. There is a chance it's prison made, but I think this buckle that has more of a butterfly shape is not the prison made. Um, so I think it was just a hand tooled piece, but it's in great shape. The straps are good and the horses are what will sell it. And that's why I didn't mind paying $20. I figure it's worth $45 in the right place. These great little Bakelite pencil sharpeners with the characters. They sell for about $25 to $35 each, sometimes more depending on the character. They're 1930s. Here's Joe Carioca from the Three Caballeros and Popeye the Sailor. And this one is Donald Duck in a very strange sort of almost cross shape. Don't really understand that shape, but it's easy to hold, I guess. Maybe that was the idea. Three little micro mosaic pill boxes from Italy. These sell for about 20 a piece. I got them off of a $3 table. This was only $10, which was wonderful. A friend of mine gave me a very good deal on it. And I've already had three people come along and say that there's some town in Ohio here where the streets are named after cigarettes and Woodbine is one of them. So maybe it'll go to someone there. These are Limoges. Now they're hand painted. PPL France lets you know Limoges. M. Kerr is the person, and she must have been an amateur China painter, but these are very cute little sets. Done around 1920s or 30s. I like the morning glories very much. It's just a very cute way that it's done, and I thought for $5 each, they were just really sweet. This is Wireless Cloisonne made in Japan, 1950s and 60s, and it is Occupied Japan in this case. It says on the bottom of the lighter, the dealer showed me after I bought it. That one I think I got for 18. I'm thinking because it's Wireless Cloisonne that out west where they appreciate this more, it might go for 35 to 40. This is a very sweet silhouette with the spinner and it's got the milkweed background and the milkweed backgrounds are always more popular and it's a little tray rather than just a hanging piece. So it's got some things going for it that a typical silhouette doesn't. It was only $10. I think it's worth probably 30 because of the milkweed and being a tray rather than a hanging piece. And then there's this. This was a great deal. This was $10. There are a whole bunch of Hotel China plates on the table at $10 each, and I probably could have bought more. But the reason I picked this one, I saw the very strong pattern with the ship around the edges and turned it over, and it is from the Miami Biltmore. This was done in 1941, and this particular piece recently sold for $60 online. So for $10, I was very excited to get it.
I got a few little pieces of costume jewelry, nothing major but cute. Only $5 for the micro mosaic pin, only $3 for this little enamel blue bracelet with the rhinestones. It's a no-name, but it's just got a great look, and for $3 I couldn't beat it. This is Renoir, and I have other pieces that match this. This was 10 and this exotic bird, which looking at the painting is probably a little later in time, but sometime in the late 40s, I would estimate. And that one was only $10 as well, which is a great price for that. That should sell for 25 to 30 easily. And here is our last little group of things. These came from a very nice gal who is helping a thrift store in the Carolinas, and they brought a bunch of stuff up to sell. And she said, we have some neat modernist stuff that we haven't been able to find a buyer for, and we can't take it back to the Carolinas. And would you like to come look? So I got this wonderful whole basket. I love the butterfly stuff. There is your mark, 1956. This was a Dorothy Bauer design. And then these two are Tobin style by Dansk. This one is the mixing bowl. So that's why no lid. But this one has the classic lid. It's been used so the handle is worn. That can be re-oiled, which I will do. But the interior is really clean. And that's the most important part because when they get cooked in, they tend to get little chips on handles. They tend to be fried on the bottom. The Coben style was made in Denmark and France, and those are the early pieces, so those are what you want. I paid a total of $50 for all three pieces, and if I have some luck, because this color of bright blue is good, I think just the big pot alone could probably sell for double that. So I was very happy to get these, and it was a nice way to wrap up the morning shopping. Mother Tuckers, and we have Michael Todd. And they have been shopping all weekend, and they are going to show us what they found on Sunday. Oh, that's I'm cute. I'm just going to set stuff out and let George... Wow, look at the poodles. That is cute. Very 50s looking. I, it's something that just did, and they did it really well. I like that a lot. Ah. Uh, There's a theme. Yes. What's your theme? Poodles. 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 Poodle. Lipper and man. Cute things. Oh, that's cute. Oh my gosh, eight dollars. That's yeah. a great price. Mm -hmm. You think that's it Fenton? Fenton. It, looks it like is. Bamboo it definitely looks like Fenton yeah. to me. This, this, uh, the handle looks right. They uh, uh, apparently towards the end, they called them handlers. They're the ones who applied the glass handles, and the little thing on here tells you who it was. I wish they would do a guidebook where we could see because I can't tell you who it was. I just know that that meant it was one person, and they could get back to them if there was a problem. Oh. Oh. Picture George. They used to have it on the tag, so when you would buy from Fenton, Fenton had their Fenton tag, and then they showed who it was. It would actually have the handler's oh, name. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So there's like six of them that they identify. That's the only identification I have, and I took a picture of it off of one of the original tags. Oh, that's awesome! Thank you. you get it. Oh, that's great. These are my last day vines. Last day vines. Here we go. For the antique. Physiology, oh, okay. hygiene, stimulants, and narcotics. Oh boy, that was back when they were about to be copium illegal, so that should be interesting. <laughs> now, I did get these. I got them because they were a dollar, the little fine copium. Oh gosh, yeah, for that price, how can you say no? I mean, I know that this is something we see a lot, but they're graduated sizes, they're great colors. Exactly, they're terrific. I mean, and you know, if you look on eBay, you're going to see completed sales like 15 and 18 and 20 on those. Oh, I love the owl. That's so great with the rhinestone eyes. Oh, yes, and she's familiar to me. Is she a Napco? She's not. I think she is. I'm pretty sure I've seen it. I don't know that it matters that much to the collector, but it's cute. Okay, tell me about these. 80s carnival prizes. The ones that have like the uh, styrofoam in them, you know, the little pellets. Yeah, yeah, the pellets, it's yes. Itchy, but at three bucks each, yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, no, they're really fun. And I love the I love the glued on eyes. I, as a kid, I always wanted to peel those off. Yes. Remember the bananas they used to have like this? I know the violence, yes. The bananas, they were my favorite. So yes, three dollars each. It's got the Joey in the pocket. That's cool. No smell. Okay. 
no smell is always good. <laughs> That's the thing with plush, you know, I mean, ever since Misty found the $500 plush, of course, all of us are suddenly turned on to, ooh, look for plush. And I went through a bin and I was just like, oh, I smell like baby pee. Yeah. Ugh, this is awful. So now I realize, yeah, wear gloves when you're going through the plush. <laughs> I'm so glad that you came and had a good time. It just, uh, it, I, the only problem for me is I get to watch all of you walk around and have all this fun. And I'm like, I love selling here, but now I want to just shut the booth and shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people have fun, obviously, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the funny thing is people leave because Sunday is the slowest day and, and you're going to pack up anyway. But I don't know how after a busy Saturday you pack everything up and go. I just don't know how people do that. It's, it's too much for me with all this breakable stuff. And, I mean, I sold six or $700 on a Sunday. So we're winding down the show. And of all the people who came, Cindy, I think, wins the award as being the biggest trooper because she's still here. She and I are the last ones left standing. And look at her great, this is her YouTube site. Look at this wonderful logo. You got that photo. Tell me the story again. I picked up, it's a big picture. Um, it's a beautiful antique picture frame. Picked that up at an estate sale. It was the last day. I couldn't believe anybody left it there because it's two kids, right? Yeah. And um, beautiful antique picture frame. They left it. I got it for five dollars. Oh my gosh! So that's it's become great. my mascot. I, people keep trying to buy it out from underneath me. That's great. Well, maybe that needs to be your swag. You could just uh, start making those and sell them on your uh, site. Great. And it looks like you've been having fun. I have been having fun. I picked. This is probably my favorite thing today. I'll show you. I picked up this whole bag of vintage Halloween tissue. Oh, that's how neat! Favorite. $5 Happy New Year, bag. Halloween. Happy Halloween. Oh my gosh, and there's somebody's fangs in there. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's really cool. And it's so interesting to me that people were finding Halloween right before Halloween because you would expect that that would be like price to the moon, but people were finding good deals on it here. And then I also got a big bag. This is totally my thing. This is Christmas. Oh Christmas. yes. I like these ones that are on the spikes. A friend of mine started mm -hmm. collecting those and the way he uses them, I was like, oh, those are really cool. Oh, that's great. Oh, I'm glad you were having fun. I was having a ball. <laughs> well, what a fun show. I had such a good time doing this. It was so great seeing so many people. So many viewers came. So many YouTube content creators came. I had a really wonderful time with everybody. Uh, it's the best show I've had in Springfield, Ohio since I've started doing this show and that was amazing too. So thank you all so much. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!